Hey, what's up, Vanguard players? Archangel7, and today I'm going to be doing something a bit different uh, for my channel. Um, for one, I'm actually on camera this time, so. And uh, second, um, I'm going to be doing pretty much a tutorial talking about how to improve your card fight skills for card fight Vanguard. Um, I was looking online at different YouTubes and things like that. It's not a whole lot of material out there that kind of breaks down uh, ways that you can improve at Vanguard. So I just thought, you know, I could throw my opinions out there, some techniques that I use in order for me to get better as a card fighter. So um, there is five things that I do um, to improve my skills. So uh, yeah, we'll hop right into it. All right, so. The first thing you can do to improve your card fight skills is to have a main clan. Now, main clan is what I think is the most important thing to have if you're trying to improve in Vanguard. And the, the reason that is because it gives you it gives you a focus point for one, and second, you know you need something that you can grow with and something that you can perfect. Uh, when you are in competitive play. Uh, such as local tournaments, regionals, nationals, uh, what have you, you can't switch clans in the middle of the tournament. You know, if you start with Gear Chronicle, you have to ride it out with Gear Chronicle, no matter what you face. If Gear Chronicle is bad matchup against, let's say, uh, what's that deck? Musketeers. If they're a bad matchup against them, just because you know you're about to come against Musketeer, you can't switch out that deck. You can't sideboard in cards to help give you the edge you're set with that deck you're set with that clan so you need to constantly be using that clan every chance you get so that way you can face as many decks as possible as many as opponents as possible and that you can perfect that deck's playstyle and uh, you just overall learn how to you know beat the other builds so Alright, so the next thing we can do in order to improve our card fight skills is understand the meta. Now, meta is simply what is being played. There are two types of metas. You have your card fight vanguard meta, which is just um, the meta for the entire game. And then you have your local meta, which is going to be what's being played at your shops. So when we look at the, the card fight vanguard meta, there's Legion and there's Strive. The reason you want to know this is because you need to know what strengths and weaknesses um, the meta brings to the game. You know, Strive, for example, you get a triple drive instead of a twin drive. Why is that important? Because players' hand sizes are getting very big. Very big. And, um, for some decks, that's important to know because you don't really have a way of dealing with their hand size. So, um, you know, you, that, that will make you change your strategy overall. If you're playing a clan that you might usually be defensive with, you might tech in a couple of offensive cards in order to keep that hand size at a reasonable, you know, size instead of them sitting there with 15 cards in hand. So, um, that's definitely why you want to know the uh, card fight vanguard meta and um, for locals you gotta know it. that's what's gonna help you top in your tournaments that's what's gonna help you win if you're constantly playing against um, players who uh, let's say have run very aggressive decks then you might want to change your strategy up tech in cards that helps deal with aggression possibly a little more defensive cards, some cards that retire, um, such as like if, you, if you're using uh, going against Nova Grapplers, uh, Extreme Battlers, um, and you're running Royals. Royals aren't as aggressive as your Nova Grapplers, so you know, having something like Blaster Blades to retire, or having units that can retire units might play into your favor. You know, so you gotta know your local meta Know what's being played. Know if Jeff is playing Kyro. Know if Dan is playing Link Joker. What have you? You know. So that's why the meta is important, guys. Um, make sure you stick with your meta. Do not tech in cards. Do not put cards in because you've seen it online, 
or because this person suggested it because, you know, people play Kagero. Because if you never go against a Kagero player, but your deck is set up to go against Kagero, it's not benefiting you for what you're playing at the here and now. So, uh, yeah, make sure you stick with your meta. That's how you're going to win, and that's how you're going to continue to win and continue to improve. Um, <clears throat> but aside from that, you do want to know what is being played um, in other areas. You do want to know what kind of decks are popular, so that way when you do go to something bigger than your locals, or you might be like me, and you might travel around to different people's locals and play. If you're like that, you know, you might want to have... I'll say, uh, like a sort of a side deck, nothing that you can tech in in the middle of a game or in the middle of a tournament, but if you arrive at a brand new area, a brand new local shop um, that you never played at, you know, you can talk to some people, hey, what what do you guys kind of play out here? Oh, he plays Aqua Force, he plays Ground Blue, he plays this, okay, I have this little stack of cards, you know, maybe you got about just... 10, 15 different cards that might help change your strategy. Um, you might have something that you can tech in, tech out for aggression, tech in, tech out for defensive, tech in, tech out for hand advantage. So just having some cards that mesh well with the deck that you are running, having those available to you for if you do travel and you do know what's being played out there, that's also a good idea. So um, yeah, meta is very important to know and to understand. Alright, so next thing uh, is going to be practice. Practice, then practice. After you practice, more practice. Then practice a little more. Um, this um, will probably be the most important aspect as far as getting better at the game is to uh, just be constantly playing against different clans, different deck builds, and different players uh, most importantly. The reason uh, different players is the most important is because you can have two of the same decks but two different players are gonna run them differently. It'd be same cards but they don't do the same thing. It's like they you know each player has their own kind of play style so even if someone was using two players using Neo Nectar you know one could use them different than the other so you definitely want to go against different clans and builds, but most importantly, try to get many different players uh, as possible. And if you only play at your locals and you guys got 10 guys, you know, hey, make do with that. But make sure you play them all um, in casual matches and play test matches so that you can, you know, see kind of see how they think and what they do with, you know, with the deck that they're running. Um, Aside from that, you also want to proxy cards in te uh, practice too. You know, this will help you to prepare for maybe what's coming out in new sets, or you know, just help you see what to what you could run in your deck to make your deck better. So make sure you're always practicing. Even if you're at home alone, you can you can draw. Just work on your draws to see how consistent your draws are. Are you getting your grade one through three of opening hand or does it take two draws to get to three or you know just doing stuff like that or you can even have if you have multiple decks you can even play yourself in matches um, in order to you know practice too I do that a lot I um I just play against myself I have two decks well not I have way more than two decks I have a lot of decks um, it just depends on what I want to practice against if I want to practice against some real aggression I use my Nova Grapplers if I want to practice against something a little more defensive, uh, I can use, let's say, Oracle Think Tank. You know, so having having different builds at home that you can practice with is really good. Um, it's also just good to see what your deck can do. You know, because if you're at home practicing, you know, you may be controlling both aspects of the game, but that doesn't mean you're not seeing, you know, learning certain strategies that you can do, certain plays or combos that you can do. So practice is going to be your most important aspect to getting better at the game. So now that we have our main clan, we understand the meta, we practice all the time now. Now it's time for a two four-letter acronyms, okay? RTCF and RTCP, okay? 
Let's read the effing card and read the effing person player. Okay. And what that is saying is to make sure that you aren't just letting your opponent do whatever he wants to do. Okay. Um, because they may not even know what the actual text on the card is. Uh, for example, um, I've had someone swing at a rear guard with a GB1 12k attacker and they swung at my rear guard for 12. While 12 doesn't make a difference from 9, still, that person attempted that. And I'm like, no, you can't, you know, he's only 12 at the vanguard. You know, he's only 10 at the vanguard, both of those guys. Um, <clears throat> another example is uh, I, I play Royal Paladin, so I am at a local and I ride my Gablade and uh, Gablade hits and I didn't have any more grade twos in the deck. It, you know, it was a little bit later in the game, we done threw all kind of things down. So I didn't have a grade two, I'm like, huh, no targets and I shuffle back in and you know, so we play the match, whatever. Then I believe either the same the same night I'm watching a video of uh, someone I don't know where they're from. It was like one of the Co Korean areas, um, but they're playing a match and it's a Royal Paladin user, and he hits the Vanguard with Gablet and he calls an alt mile. And I was looking like, what is he doing? You know, you can you can't call no grade three. And I was like, okay, I'm about, I'm about to leave a comment, like, yo, what was this? And I'm like, hold up, before I, before I, you know, freak out, I'm like, let me grab my copy and reread them. So I read them. It says, you know, call it grade two or greater. And I was like, ah, oh, are you serious? Like, you know, that one little misread on a card can cost you a game. Because if I knew I could call a grade three, I would have called a grade three. And that would have extended my attacks and, you know, add more pressure, uh, get rid of his hand size a little more. So you definitely want to read the cards always. Always read your opponent's cards. If they start throwing out stuff and, and they're moving off fast, like, you know, hey, pump your brakes real quick. Let me see what this card does. Because you'll be surprised at how many people misplay uh, certain cards. So, um, yeah, make sure you read the card. And then you also read the player, you know, read what that person is doing. So now we're getting a little more into the, the paying very, very close attention aspect of the game. You want to make sure that you're really, really, really watching what your opponents do. This is important because it tells you how to, um, how to attack, how to defend, um, how to pressure and how, just how to set up columns and it, it just tells you everything for example if your opponent um, let's say let's say he um, you attack his vanguard for 14 and he's 11 obviously so that's a 5k guard if he guards with 10 you want to ask yourself why did he guard with 10 okay is he saving a unit that he wants to play is it a unit that could possibly change the game or you know does he have grade threes in hand or does he hold on a perfect guard so you have to pay close attention to small details like that you know if if person's guarding over you know you you want to be able to see that you want to read that player and, and know okay this is what he's doing um, also reading the players you know what deck is he running you know is, is he setting setting something up why did he decide to take saint blows double crit you know and he's sitting at three damage he knows he could die you know but it's like you know either in his mind either he takes two damage in order to set up for the win or at least try to win or he's just going to die in the process so you know make sure you're reading the players and just kind of watching exactly what they do uh one other thing to add to that to those two um is just always math guys do not let the person do not let your player uh, your opponent math for you always math that's you know very important because the the difference between a 30k attack and a 31k attack in order to make that safe for you is 10k shield 
and that's a lot of shield to give up if you don't have to. If a person's act, if a person says if they swing in and they say 31, when it's actually 30, you have to guard a whole extra 5k in order to two to pass him. Yeah, in order to pass him. Yeah, because you're 11, you'll go 21, 31, and he said 31. So you throw another 10 out, 41, two to pass. If he said 30, you can go 21. 31, 5 will make 36. That's still two to pass. So, you know, it's very important to make sure just that math is being done correctly. Um, if you need to, keep track of, uh, you know, the power ups that people are getting. Um, there are, you know, dice that you can get. I have these uh, Pokemon dice that you get from the kind of fat pack type of thingy, whatever it is. Um, yeah, just get get a bunch of dice if you need to be able to keep track of people's power-ups, but always math in your head, you know, always do that because as you saw, that simple 1K difference caused you to guard uh, for even more. So, yeah, pay attention to those things. All right, so the last thing has to do with uh, the losing aspect of the game. Um, this one, like all, all of these are really important things that you can do in order to improve your car fight skills, but this one is really important. Um, it's because you're going to lose, you know, there's going to be times that you lose and it's, it's very important to analyze and learn. And what this is, is when you lose a match, um, you want to analyze the loss. You want to find out why did you lose and was there something you could have done differently in order to win. First off, do not be that player where you lose and the first thing you say is, wow, dude, where's my triggers? Wow, I didn't hit any hills. Wow, where's my grade threes? Like, really? Like, I... I can't express how much I cannot stand players like that. It's so annoying. Like, for one, you're relying on the luck factor of the game in order to win because you're worrying about where your triggers are. And two, it's like, you know, stop making excuses for why you lost. You know, there's, I can guarantee if you start looking at your matches in in a way to where you're asking yourself, what can I have done to win, to win or to to help me win? If you look at something, you're like, well, you know what? I guarded like 41 when he was at 30. Or, or I mean, not 30. I guarded 41 when he was at like 29. And it's like, you know, I could have saved that guard and survived the next turn. You know, and so when you start looking at stuff with that aspect, you will see that a lot of matches that you lose, it's probably it probably goes back to RTCF, RTCP, and the whole aspect of just paying attention to what's going on. You know, looking in your opponent's drop zone, you know, to see how many triggers you have. If you looked in his drop zone, you would have saw this guy has eight crits in the, you know, drop zone and damage zone combined. You know, maybe he doesn't have any more crits. You know, there's a possibility that he could have crits, but then again, there's not. So, hey, don't guard. I don't guard. You know, you, you might crit me, but you might not. A lot of decks run eight crits, you know, four draw for you, or maybe eight crits draws, a couple stands. But um, you want to take, you want to look at your losses, and you want to analyze them. You know, you don't want to make excuses for why you lost. You want to find solutions for how you can win. Uh, there's two aspects when you are looking, uh, when you're analyzing. There are there's the controlled factor, and then the uncontrolled factor. When you look at your controlled factor, those are mistakes that you made in the match that um, if you were to rectify them within the same match, you, you know, might have won or you might have put up more of a fight. So um, that's, the, that's the first thing you want to look at always. When you lose, hmm, what happened? You know, and, you know, uh, then the next one is... Um, the uncontrolled factor and that's going to be 
kind of the luck factor of the game, which is draw. If you're running a deck that usually pressures, but you had no rear guards, you drew into no rear guards that entire game, or for the majority of the game, you want to look at that. Like, okay, well, you know, on another note, I also didn't have pressure like I supposed to, or, you know, I had nothing but this in my hand, I had nothing but this in my hand. And for those things, you can't usually, they're, they're uncontrolled factors, so you can't fix them per se, but sometimes when you look at the uncontrolled factor, it is simply um, inconsistencies within the deck. Could be grade lineup, it could be uh, certain cards that you used that just made the deck run inconsistently. So looking at both aspects is greatly, greatly going to improve your game. Uh, trust me, that's one of my, that's probably my main tactic uh, for improving. Like anyone at my locals, they know. When I lose, I don't even say anything. I don't say, oh, I didn't have rear guards. Oh, I didn't have this. I sit there, I let the salt boil inside, and I analyze it. I'm like, dang, you know, why did I lose that match? And I'm playing it back through my head, and I'm like, you know what? One match I actually lost was um, against Dimensional Robos. He broke road over whatever Dayusha and he had, you know, um, some unit on there. I'm not good with dimensional robos, but the the break ride, I think it was like an Enigma or something. I don't know. But it, it was going to swing in for three, and it had the ability to break a shield. And I just... I just wasn't thinking about the shield break skill. I, I'm like, you know, and I, and I wasn't paying attention, and I didn't realize he kept putting grade threes back in the deck with that uh, that die jet, the, the new die jet, I think that's what it is. Um, he kept putting grade threes back in, so all these things were just missing me. It just missed me. And I guarded for just guard, you know. Uh, I guarded for, I think, like a two to pass or something. And his first check was whatever and then second check grade three and I'm like yes you know he didn't hit it and he's like no I break a shield boom and I'm like oh <laughs> so I went from three damage to six damage and you know I because I analyzed that after the fact I'm like oh you know I wasn't paying attention so that goes into the control factor of the deck then I looked at the uncontrolled factor of that match, and I'm like, yeah, and on the same note, I didn't have rear guards. You know, my rear guards were missing the whole entire game. Like, I'd, I'd have one on the field, and then none on the field. Then one on the field, then none on the field. So, um, it's very, very, very important to analyze and to learn from your mistakes. Don't sit there and make excuses. That's terrible. Like, if you're looking for triggers in order to win, you're probably a bad player from the get-go. That's just my opinion. I just can't stand when people do that. And I know you've all seen it. I know you've all seen that stuff. Oh, where's my heels, dude? I didn't get any triggers this game. I'm like, really? You worried about triggers? Like, you, this is pathetic. Like, my deck generally will not, is they don't typically win because of triggers. It's more or less, I'll have you in a position to where you have no choice but to not guard what's coming at you. You don't have a choice. So whether or not I put a trigger on it or not, you can't guard, period. So, you know, and that's how you want the game to be. That's That should be your goal for your wins. Your goal shouldn't be, yeah, he's at three damage, I got double crit coming for him. Or he's at four damage, let me get this crit and end the game. Like, you know, if it happens, two thumbs up. If not, you know, that shouldn't be your focus point of the game. You know, do not make, do not sit there and blame it on triggers. You look very dumb doing that. I just want players to know that. In my opinion, when I see people do that, you look you look weak. You look like a terrible player, you know. But like I said, that's just my opinion. But analyze your losses, learn from them, look at your controlled factors uncontrolled. If you see a, a consistency in the uncontrolled factor, if you see that you just can't build hand size, then you might want to change the deck around a bit throwing draw triggers, throwing cards that may have the Soul Blast 2 draw cards, to, you know, to increase your hand size. So, um, yeah, those are the five ways to improve your card fight skills, guys. I hope this was helpful to you. Like I said, it's things I use to help me out, and I don't want to toot my horn, but to toot, I'm a pretty good player. And uh, let's see, right now, 
I have, since I've been playing my Royals um, competitively and had them built, it, it's been probably, I want to say about six to seven tournaments, and I have not uh, failed to top in every single one of them. And not just top, but usually end up being second, you know, or, you know, yeah, about going up to top two. So I, I've always went top two uh, for these six to seven tournaments straight um so yeah so using these techniques they definitely can help you out and help you become a, a, a better card fighter so like i said i hope this was helpful uh thank you guys for watching i'll probably be putting up a deck profile or something um uh, another day but uh yeah stay uh stay practicing stay improving your game and